Axel and um, I'm Norwegian. I've been in London for 20 years and uh, I went to China to teach in 2020 and um, I have seen some really bad things in China that I think that maybe people should know about because I think maybe it's the plan to happen here as well so yeah so that's where I'm coming from in Shanghai uh, they've had a um, hard lockdown uh, which means nobody can leave their apartments they're not allowed to leave to get food you have to be tested every single day so you have uh, basically you have to line up at five o'clock in the morning to get tested uh, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative you're still in lockdown uh, that, like if you test positive you will be taken away to a quarantine hospital which has really bad conditions they don't give you any food they don't give you any water and uh, they're basically starving people to death and uh, it's happened where I was living as well I was actually in lockdown myself for three weeks and uh, those three weeks I was not allowed to leave the compound um, they wanted me to test but I refused so I couldn't go outside to the local shop and get food I will have to get someone to give food to me so I'm thinking about those people in Shanghai that maybe don't have anyone that could help them to take food to them um, what would they do and like if they've been taken away if they leave the building it's basically it's murder you know so um, and I know this is a fact because I have friends who lives in Shanghai they've been taking videos from their old balconies and uh, people are screaming out their windows because they have no food they can't feed their families and um, uh, also if you if you actually are allowed to leave um, your compound you will have to show three different codes uh, QR codes also you have to have a travel code that you haven't been outside the province that you're allowed to travel in so it's basically complete tyranny and they have control over everything that you do so that's why I had to leave I, I came back to the UK two weeks ago and uh, it's gotten worse there after I left now um, the area that I was living in Shangzhou um, uh, all, all of the students and stuff now has to be tested daily inside the school even though it's a boarding school um, and um, uh, there is less and less food available um, they are shutting down some uh, shops where you know the local farmers are delivering food to as well um, so it's, it's, it's getting really bizarre, the whole thing is getting really bizarre. They die in their apartments or they jump out of the window because they can't handle, like their business has gone out the window, uh, they, they don't have any food, they can't feed their families. And usually on these floors in those uh, high-rise blocks where they live, um, there might be an entire um, family of children, parents and grandparents all living in a three-bedroom apartment and they don't have any food. Um, so we have seen people actually jumping out of the blocks because they, are, they, they can't take it anymore. Some are even doing it in protest. I haven't seen anyone jumping out but I have a video from a friend that she said do, do not share it but look at this and she, she showed me that video so that was that was actually from her neighboring block where she is staying in Shanghai so um, obviously I can't give any names and because everything is regulated and you are monitored 24-7 uh, via WeChat or um, uh, Alipay so like these green codes you have to have your location on your phone because if you're going somewhere and or there's no record of where you've been going you will be penalized for that um, so they are recording everything um, I um, used an e-bike down there which is which, uh, an e-bike is a, it's a scooter but it's quite fast and it's electric so uh, so I bought that when I was down there so I went out myself around different areas just to get get out that was not during lockdown but before you still had to use codes to get in before that um, but I, I found places where I could pay with cash 
and um, you know just try to enjoy myself doing things that you know they accepted cash and they didn't ask for a code and there were a few places there, there's always always places you can go um, if you really kind of like know your way around so uh, so that was kind of like my fun part doing that it was in a lockdown but we were restricted in areas so so if I was on that bike you can see where I was I left my phone at home um, which is very risky to do in China but I did and uh, just to cash so that was my little freedom moment <laughs> like they, they might ask you anywhere to show your your code like I might even have to show it to go back where I was coming from or like maybe that set up a stand before, like in front of my compound so I would have to show a health code to get in and if I didn't have my phone then um, you know uh, what do you do so you will be arrested or you would be to, like you be, be forced to be in quarantine or you know they, it, they will find something they will find something because I used VPN, which a lot of the experts are doing over there. Um, so when you use VPN, uh, you basically kind of look like you are from, like, login from the UK. Uh, so we, we, we could use all the ser search engines. Also, I installed uh, a different uh, search engine than Google as well, because uh, that's actually heavily monitored from China. So it just, just to be on the safe side when I was doing my things, um, so I went through it. If I'm looking at like brand anything, but um, uh, it's one that says courage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so I used that and uh, trying to cover my co cover all my steps, everything I was doing. But um, I, I spoke to a lot of people, you know, away from media and stuff. So that, I think that was quite effective as well. None of them have VPN because you have to actually be in a country where you don't need to use VPN to install it. So, like, you have to install it from the UK. So I installed it on all of my devices before I left because I knew um, that you needed to do that beforehand. You can't even transfer it over to another device. So it has to be installed on the device before you go into the country. So to be on the safe side, I had like seven devices with me just in case I was losing one or two. Like I didn't know how long I was going to be there for, so better safe than sorry. In the circumstances of late, um, I, for me, I would teach online. So I would just sit in a chair in my flat and that was my day. Just teaching online, sharing screen and all of that. So um, it, it was really boring, um, very repetitive. You don't sleep very well because you don't know what's going to happen next. You know, you worry about stuff all the time. So, um, you know, and that you can't really watch TV there because it's all propaganda and all Chinese. So I, I would just kill time with like making art and you know, working with the, with the kids. That's it. So that's why I'm here today because um, I haven't obviously been able to protest for 18 months, but I did before I left. Um, and um, like, I feel that this is coming here if we don't stop it and we need to really actively stop it and that there's so few people actually showing up today yeah. uh, it's a very disappointing thing because yeah. uh, and i think that it's just because they've been falling for the trick of relaxation it's not actually um relaxed at all um it's just a break there is more coming and unless we are actually working really hard right now to stop taking our sovereign rights away um there is no it's a point of no return when that happens and uh, then all of that stuff that happens in China is going to be everyday business here we're all, all going to end up in concentration camps or dead so sorry for the gloom but I think they are planning to do exactly the same thing they're doing in China everywhere um, the reason for that is that they everything is coming from the same place so uh, you have new uh, what was called uh, uh, young new leaders, um, World Economic Forum, and um, they are all in it together. And um, 
they mm -hmm. are just playing up against each other to create division, you know, divide and conquer. It's a you know, famous model of uh, getting to power. So they're making people hate each other. Like first it was inside the countries, you know, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter and uh, Antifa, for example, you know, causing division within very small communities. Now they want to do it global. So they are, they are pushing countries against each other. So now you have like the Ukraine business going on with then uh, Russia and China canoodling with India. Then you have like all of these like entities going together. You, are, you have um, uh, NATO, which is pushing on the other side. So that is kind of like two whole bits of the world who's now going against each other. They, they're looking like they're picking sides but it's all a smoke screen it's all a smoke screen um they, they are all in it together like it doesn't matter what country china america australia all of the european countries um any country they are all right now doing the same thing the same thing and they're just doing it on different levels so people are like oh i'm getting a bit of hope because they didn't lock down in sweden and but it's why are they still protesting in sweden then you know so um you know you have like all of this going on to cause confusion and to cause divide anger fear all of these things they're putting together in different levels in all of the different countries so just because yeah we are relaxed here today yeah having a good day out but if you have looked into things if you have even read the agenda 2030 if you have even tried to read it or try to understand what it's actually about um, then you know that this is not the end they have loads more ready for us and what I see in the sky every single day is chemtrails. We're being poisoned from the sky onto the ground. It goes into the water. We're already being poisoned by water. We're also being poisoned all of the metals we are breathing in and eating and, um, and bathing in and drinking is going to reflect or have an impression on you and it can cause disease it can cause uh, alzheimer's it can cause all of these different things and uk at the moment yeah we are relaxed here and that is why there wasn't that many people out on the protest today because they think that oh we're out and we're, we're out of the waters no you're not you are definitely not and if you think so then you really need to think again because there is a lot more there's a lot more to to come but we we can stop it we can stop it going that far and that's why we are here today and everyone who's here today is talking about that exact thing and it's it's consuming everything it's consuming the food you eat the medication you take the water you drink how you live um, it was the first day today for 18 months that I put my my bare feet on the grass and felt grounded because I haven't been able to do that where I was you know they just put you out my my apartment was on 29th floor like how can you be grounded like that <laughs> anyway um, so they are trying to disconnect us they're trying to separate us they're trying to get keep the distance wear masks so you can't express yourself um, uh, not have human connection the penal gland, gland needs to be trained every single day you need to be connected with people and they are trying to make that not happen because they want to destroy the human connection they want to destroy love and they want to destroy um, our, our own sovereign um, decision making in life what do you actually want to do I don't know anymore I'll do what you are telling me you know that is what they're trying to do so no but the, the, the difference here is is not that far away from each other it really isn't and in Europe now they are going to do uh, the digital identity cards it's already been la launched in Belgium I think or I don't remember which country but I just read about it earlier um, when it's happening in the EU it will happen in the UK it will happen in America it will happen everywhere we have to stop it just say no pay with cash <laughs> I paid with cash for one and a half years in China you can do it here come on <laughs> if you can get that into your 
mind and mindset and be at peace with that and actually accept that you've been tricked. We all did. You've been tricked by really, really intense, powerful sources. And um, if you can get that into your mind and actually live with that, live with that knowledge that actually you were fooled from the very beginning, it's very, very hard but try to do it, because then everything else is starting to fall into place. I mean, they lied about 9-11 as well. I mean, that was, the, that was the first time I woke up, really. I understood that they had lied about what actually happened. You know, it was an inside job. It was actually controlled demolition. It's been proven by, like, millions of experts of, like, all of the ins and outs of it. It's, it's, it's basically a foolproof demolition and it had to be planned and then you have to ask why why did they do that and then you get all of the answers when you see what happened afterwards and then now what do you do with yourself well you have to s sort of accept that you've been fooled and then you look back at all of the other things you've been told in the past and um, then you start to see the truth especially since there was so much pressure to, to, to do things because of it. Don't you think there is something sinister going on here? When it comes to Ukraine, I, I really don't know because uh, that could be two, two different um, uh, perspectives and that would just be my opinion. So I'm not actually sure you know, how, how that's going to go pan out. I don't know how, who, how much Putin is involved with a World uh, Economic Forum, if it's against them or with them. That's the big question here. And I, I can only say, I hope he's against, but you know, um, that's, that's my opinion. So I'm not sure if that's, you know, something I should dive more into. Well, I, I hope it's not around the corner. Um, but what they, what, what they, what, what's in the waters is that um, it's going to be a climate change lockdown, where people then can't move around because it's, uh, it's, it's bad for the environment and uh, all of these kind of things. So you get like, I heard uh, someone saying that may, maybe you would not be able to go out on a Sunday, and so you'll be restricted. So like, they're going to control when you're allowed to go out for a drive. Does that sound like China to you? I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's already uh, like you know, it's that, that's in the planning. I think it's in the planning, and they're going to call it um, they're going to call it environmental lockdown or something like that. Um, but then you have to ask why they're spraying poison in the sky over us, full of metals, um, chemtrails are poisoning all the earth. Everything, everything uh, that we are touching at the moment and breathing in. Elon Musk is uh, a part of the World Economic Forum, um, and everyone is like going like, "Yeah, he bought Twitter. We have our freedom of speech back." No, you don't. You're being fooled. And also, um, anything that's getting uh, mainstream media coverage. You know, it's going to be something to do with the agenda because no, 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 nobody else is getting coverage. I mean, I've been on three protests in London in 2020. It was the first time we ever had that many people showing up and uh, BBC didn't show it. Nor did any of the other TV channels for that matter. So I managed to go through uh, the entire Shanghai airport when I went back in uh, October 2020. There was no questions, uh, like, you have to wear, everyone was wearing it. Hell no. Unless it completely changed. Like, like if it completely changes with leadership or like, like everything has to change. It will have to be the paradise of China that I had in my head. But it's full of pylons and it's so industrial. It's such an industrial country. It's very difficult to find little gems with beauty in there. I found a few, but you know, it's usually old cities. Just um, make sure that you keep your human rights, no matter what, because nobody can take them away from you. You just have to know that you have them.